Let's continue with the design of the components in our engine project. In the previous video, I created the engine cover here in the same part studio as the engine block. Now I'm going to create a muffler also in the same part studio. It'll be helpful to do everything together. And we're just going to concentrate on the exterior geometry, not going to make anything of the interior baffles or anything like that. So to start out creating a new part, I'm going to locate a sketch plane offset from this surface. So I can select the surface, right mouse click, and then offset plane. And here it has it offset a certain distance. We can drag it out a little bit, but I want it to be offset a value of 150. So let's plug in our number. That looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And now that we have our plane created, let's select it and then create a new sketch. And actually, before I do that, let's start off by turning on the display of our other planes. And some of these I don't need, so I'm going to hide them. Let's hide that plane. And I do want to identify a couple that I do need. So we have a plane here that is at the middle of the bore. We also have another plane here, which is at the middle of the exhaust. And those are ones that I am going to use throughout here. Let's hide some of the other different ones that we definitely do not need. Okay, so now let's select the plane right mouse click and hold and we're going to create a new sketch and for this one it'll be easier for me if i start out oriented a little bit like so let's then right mouse click and view normal to the sketch plane the first thing i'm going to do is put in a horizontal construction line and it's going to be my axis of revolution but also help me identify how i want to create things so i go to construction mode let's sketch a line i'm going to start it out over here and just make it really long let it snap to horizontal and then hit the escape key and then i am going to add a constraint let's make it coincident to this particular surface because that is going to be my axis of revolution. Once again, view normal to the sketch. And so for the shape of this, let's start by making some lines. I'm going to make a vertical line and then a horizontal line. It's going to have a length of about 40. And then we're going to go up at an angle and then down at another angle. And then I can hit the escape key. Now I will throw in an arc and I will create a center point arc. And I know that I want the center to be like on here and I want to go from there out to over there and snap in. Let's hit the escape key. And at this point, I'm going to throw in a tangent constraint between the two entities so that it adjusts. And let's close off our sketch with a final line from here to the other end point. So that's our basic shape. Now let's put in our dimensions. So in this case here, I know that I want the angle from here to this line to be a modest two degrees. And then, oops, let's hit the undo button. I'll just that one later on. And then let's put in some of our other dimensions. That happens sometimes. Stuff flip-flops, but that's okay. We can deal with it later. Let's put in a dimension from here to here. And this one is going to be a length of 50. And the length of this line is going to be a length of 40. And I know that I want the distance from this end point to, let me rotate and try to get that plane. There we go. To this plane, this is going to be a distance of 200. Once again, let me view normal to my sketch plane. And I want a distance from, let's do this one here 
to there. And this is going to be a horizontal distance of 500. And we're also going to do a distance from this point to this point. Oh, did I get it? Let's try again. This point, there we go. And that's going to be a distance of 400. And now let me hit the escape key. Let's see if I can change that dimension this time to two degrees. One other dimension that we need in here. Let's put in our dimension from here to here. And yeah, that one is way too small. Let's change that to 125. There we go. That is the shape that I had wanted. Let me hit the escape key and I'm just going to adjust the location of this dimension. There we go. I like the shape that we have here. Let's hit the check mark. And so now we can create a revolve. And I will select the sketch that I just created. Let's click in the revolve axis field. Pick our location. And this one we're creating a new part. That's what I want. Let's hit the check mark. And so here we have part three located in the tree. Let me rename it while I'm here. Let's call it the muffler. That way we can keep track. And now that we've got our revolve in the model, let's throw in a couple of fillets. Let's go to the fillet command. I'm going to pick this edge and we're going to use a value of 30 for that one and hit the check mark and then let's create another fillet on this big edge and change that one to a value of 40 and hit the check mark there we go and so this muffler needs to be shelled out but it also needs to connect to the main exhaust in the engine block and so in this particular situation what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an extrude just using this particular face and let's hit the extrude command and now it is being given some distance and it's being added by default to the engine block but i'm going to create it as a brand new part and later on i'm going to merge it together and the reason i'm doing that is because i need know that i need to do a shell to the main revolve that i just created plus to the geometry that i am going to connect to the geometry that i'm making right now so that's what i'm creating as a new part and i'll later put it into the muffler part and so for the distance 25 is good let's hit the check mark so you'll notice that on shape automatically gives a different color to the different parts i'm going to hide the muffler for a moment just to do a quick measurement and so let me zoom in a little bit i want to make sure that i have a constant wall thickness and i know that the distance from this surface to this surface down here is a value of 7.5 millimeters so i know that that's going to be the thickness of my shell feature that i'm going to make later on so for my next feature i'm going to create a sketch on this face of the new part and it is going to be a rectangle i'm just going to snap into the sides here and then let's throw in our dimensions i'm going to dimension this to this and that's going to be a value of 7.5 and the distance from here to this edge i'm going to drag it off of the geometry 7.5 hit the enter key and so that's good for this particular sketch now let's select the sketch itself and actually let's turn on the display of the muffler and now i am going to create an extrude and so for the depth of the extrude trying to see where i can see that plane that i created right at the very beginning there it is down there let's change the depth from blind to up to face and i'm going to use this particular face and right now it's creating a brand new part 
I'm going to add this geometry. And so for the merge scope, I'm going to select the muffler part. So that way, we're going to get this new extrude connecting to our main muffler body. Let's hit the check mark for that one. And now we can create our shell feature. To do that, first I'm going to hide all the other components so that we're only seeing the shell, excuse me, only seeing the muffler. Let me use the keyboard shortcut of P to hide everything. And now I am going to create my shell feature. Let's remove this surface and left click on this surface as well. And as I mentioned before, I want a thickness of 7.5. Let's hit the check mark. Now I'm going to bring back the display of that other part. And you'll notice because of the value that we used, we have a nice transition from the mounting part of the muffler to the main body. Now we just need to put them together. So to do that, I am going to use the Boolean command. And so for the Boolean command, we're going to perform a union. We're going to do a union between the muffler and then left click on this other body and hit the check mark. And now it changed the color of the other extrude to match the muffler body. So that looks great. All right, let's see. I'm going to leave everything else still hidden. This muffler in the exterior is also going to have some cooling fins. So let's create those and to create the cooling fins. I need a plane. So let's create a plane off of this surface. And it's going to be up a distance of 80. Let's plug in the value. While I'm here, let's rename this. And this is going to be my muffler fin plane. Let's hit the check mark. And now for sketching it, I want to make sure I do see that other plane. Let me hit the keyboard shortcut of P. I'm going to change the display for a moment to translucent. And now I'm going to sketch on this surface. Let me right click and create a new sketch and then right click once more and view normal to the sketch plane. And so for this one, I know I've got a plane over here and that's the middle of the bore. I need to create a couple of construction lines. So let's do that. Let's go to construction and line and I'm going to make it offset from the surface that I want just so I can add in a constraint in a moment. Let's go to coincident and pick the construction line and pick the plane that I want it to line up with. Let's create another construction line. And again, I'm going to deliberately make it off of the geometry that I want so that I can more easily put in my constraint to here. And now that I have my construction lines, I can create a corner rectangle and let's exaggerate it and put in our symmetry constraint. And I want symmetry between that construction line and the two other lines, as well as symmetry between here. And let's pick this and this. And now we can put in our dimensions. The width of the fin is going to be a value of 5. And the length of it, let me zoom in. This is going to be a value of 240. Great. Let's hit the, actually let's rename this. I'm getting a lot of features over here and it's hard to start telling things apart. So for example, let's rename this and this is going to be my muffler fin sketch and hit the check mark. Let's hide the muffler fin plane since we're not going to need it anymore. And I'll select the sketch and then do an extrude. And instead of upward, let's flip the direction and change it to go to face. And I'll pick this face. 
on here, let's change it back to shaded display. And instead of creating this as a new body, I just want to make sure it's being added to the muffler. Let's hit the check mark. And so that is going to be my muffler fin extrude. So again, let me rename this while I'm here. And that fin needs a couple of chamfers. So let's go to the chamfer tool. And I'm going to pick this thin edge and hit the wrong key on the keyboard and this edge over here and the distance it's using right now is five I need a bigger distance but actually instead of using equal distance I'm going to use distance and angle and so the distance is going to be 7.5 by 50 degrees and I can see that the 50 went down on the wrong side, so let me use the opposite direction button. There we go. Now I have it going the way that I want. Let's hit the check mark. And now that we have our feature over here, we're going to pattern them. Let's go to the linear pattern command. And we're going to change this from a part pattern to a feature pattern. And the features I'm going to pattern are going to be the extrude and the chamfer. For the direction, let me select the plane that I have. And for the distance, we're going to use a value of 15. But let's center them about that middle one. And instead of two instances, let's create three instances. And so there we have a total of five fins. So when you choose the centered option, it's sort of like including the one in the middle. How many do you want on both sides? And this looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I've got all my different features for the muffler and we can see it on there. Let me turn on the, excuse me, turn off the display of the planes. And then to organize things a little bit, let me use the shift key to select all these different features and then right mouse click and add the selection to a folder. And these are going to be my muffler features just to organize it a little better because the feature list is getting quite long if I just have everything expanded in there and Later on, I'm going to go back and rename these different objects. Let's turn on the display of the engine block and the engine cover. So now I've got three of my parts created in the same part studio. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.